Good morning. Welcome to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Joe and Lisa here. Hey, I uh, wanted to make a quick video to talk to you today uh, about some terrible stuff going on here. If you ask us what we don't like about Ecuador, this is one of the things, um, and that's fire. Uh, the farmers here every year um, during the dry season set their fields on fire to clear them to get ready to uh, plant the next harvest. And it's an antiquated practice and it needs to be eliminated, but unfortunately they still do it. That's what they've done for hundreds of years here. And uh, other parts of the world have realized that it's a not a good process and have changed the way they farm. And it's an education process here and it's going to have to be enforced by the government. It is against the law to do it, but nobody seems to ever get prosecuted for it. No, and I will say we haven't seen fires this bad since the first year we were here. Um, but this year is, we're moving towards the El Nino. We're drier than we have been in a couple of years. And I will say we're windier this year than we have been since we got here. So um, <clears throat> all those are contributing factors. If they light a little bitty fire, it takes out a whole mountain. Yeah, as windy as it is right now, it doesn't take long for that fire to get away from you and get mm -hmm. going. And, um, you know, kudos to our bomberos, our firefighters. Um, they don't have much to work with. We don't have like, you know, big fire trucks and fire hoses where they can get up on these mountains. That's just not how it works. Um, you know, they're forced to light backfires to try to control. They, and sometimes, yes, backfires will get out of control. It happens. Um, but they, they have to, you know, do uh, fire lines where they clear the land and try to stop it. And it's just when you're working at these altitudes on the sides of a cliff, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty hard to get that under control. And there's not very many firefighters here. And so they rely on the local public to come and help and add neighbors to try to help put it out. And at this point, we know the fires started about three days ago in Yambarada Alto. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one that started on the next mountain in Rumi Wilco, I don't know uh, if that was separately started or not. Um, someone had sent me a voice text that had some guy's name on. They claim started the fire in Yumbra or Alto. They call him the stupid farmer or something like that. Um, but I, I can't seem to find that text again. And um, But anyway, so somebody knows who started this fire. And, you know, we would like to see some pressure uh, put on uh, by the local government in both here in Vilcabamba and Loja and try to put a stop to this practice. It, it takes out animals, wildlife, property, you know, and it's just a horrible practice. Yeah, and I mean, our houses are built primarily of stone, but if a fire comes through and just takes out everything around you and you still, you're going to have to rebuild your roof and so, but yeah. I mean, it could be a lot worse, but um, these people don't have enough money to to go and rebuild everything from scratch. And hardly anybody has fire insurance here because it's just way too expensive. Yeah. Um, uh, we don't. And so, um, you know, we'd be forced to pay out of our pockets to rebuild. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, one of the things about, you know, this part of Ecuador is you've got to be prepared for this. Um, you've got to have some some backup plans in place, like some pumps and some storage tanks. And, and I, I'll just tell you, 2,500 liters of of water is not going to go far. Mm -mm. Um, you'd be surprised how fast you run out of that 10, 15 minutes, that tank will be dry. And so if you don't have access to canal water, et cetera, you got to come up with a plan, some electric pumps, some gasoline pumps, and uh, have a really, you know, really those really heavy hoses where you can reach out and put a volume of water out in a hurry. And then you stand a little bit of a chance of maybe protecting your property. Yeah. And, um, you know, just have a plan in place with some of your neighbors and help each other get through it. And if you're buying land, pay attention to what's around you. Because if you've got somebody farming around you, chances are they're also going to be burning, you know, at the end of their crop season. Very, very possible. It's, you know, they all like to burn here. And uh, it's just part of the culture. We get it. We understand it. We understand that, you know, some of these farmers don't have any money to do things like cover crops. And, uh, and how to properly terminate a cover crop without burning or plowing, et cetera. Um, but that's something that's going to have to be taught. And, um, and hopefully, you know, with a little bit of help from the government, we can change the way we farm here. 
Yeah, and I will say the other concern is is um, they're expecting that as it starts raining again, we're going to get a lot of flooding and landslides. And when you take a mountainside down to nothing from a fire, you're probably going to get a lot of landslides around there, which is going to be detrimental to the people below where the fire was. Absolutely. This is an environmental disaster, in my opinion. And, and I will say I had a farmer uh, friend who said to me one time in a group of people, and I chose not to embarrass him at the time, but if this embarrasses him now, so be it. But he said, well, all I know is when we had a fire, the first things to grow back with greenery was those burned areas. And so it's like, that's an excuse. <laughs> well, let me tell you, the reason it does that is because nature is so smart, it knows it needs to replant wherever there's bare soil, and it's going to do that. It doesn't mean that it's good for the soil. The benefits of that burned carbon in the soil just are so minimal, it's not even worth discussing. The bad effect of burning off all of that carbon and putting it in the atmosphere is huge. The whole idea of growing things in the earth is that we should be absorbing that carbon in the atmosphere and putting it in the soil. And it can be converted then into sugars for plants, etc. However, um, I'm not the big know-it-all on this. I just know that I've studied it a lot. And there are people far smarter than me on this. But it's general consensus. Burning is, slash and burn is just a terrible practice. It doesn't... Uh, do a lot of good. I understand how it saves on labor for some farmers, um, but yeah, not a good practice. Yeah, and I will say that um, late last night you could see the layer of smoke hanging in the air because the winds did stop last night, but it just hung in the air and then you could just smell it everywhere. Yeah. Now the winds picked back up again this morning. It's blowing real strong. Yeah. And it's, you know, it doesn't always blow in one general direction. It, it swirls around. So what can happen is you think you got a fire like that under control and then the wind picks back up and it just blows those embers everywhere. Yeah. And then you've got all new fires going. we got a few clouds. Maybe the good Lord's going to help us out and provide some rain. Looks like rain back behind us. We're yeah. hoping that's going to happen. We need it desperately, desperately. Pray for rain for us. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you don't see helicopter water drops here and, you know, fire retardant drops. No. Um, one, those helicopters can't fly in this kind of rain. Um, this is country doesn't have money for that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, down to volunteers and it's all hand work. And you'll see them out there with the big limbs batting on the fire, trying to put it down. If you have breathing troubles, emphysema, asthma, any of those kind of things, don't go near the fire. Stay as far away from it as you can. Um, no reason to give up your life for that. Uh, but if you can volunteer and help with that kind of thing, please do. Um, we chose to uh, give money to a bamboo restaurant in town, and they are making lunches for the firemen, and they're taking lunches and water up to the firemen and to the volunteers up there. And so my friend Jose Pablo reached out to us Saturday morning. As you know, our breakfast spot is Bamboo Restaurant. And so, yes, we went right down Saturday morning, gave some money to, uh, to Jose, the owner of the restaurant there. And so they picked up, you know, uh, those lunches and delivered to those guys up there on the mountain. And uh, that's the best way that we can help. We're not in shape to be able to get up there and fight those fires. No, but I will say reach out to your prayer circles. Pray for the bomberos that are fighting the fires. Pray for some rain because they really need a little help. Um, and pray for the people that are in the path. Absolutely. Kudos to the Bomberos and all the volunteers. Yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for uh, fighting this fire. It is a long ways from our house, so don't be concerned for us. Um, you know, we did have one one year. It was back behind us, started in the town of Tumianuma. And before it was all over, it was putting hot ash on our back porch. It was, and, and worse than the, the ash that we got is it destroyed a lot of farm animals, a lot of people's homes. I mean, it was really devastating for yeah. that area. Goats were burned up in the fire, and yeah, a lot of bad stuff. Yeah. So some of the images that I'm putting up here are images that I took with my camera. Some were with cell phones, some were from other people. I apologize for poor quality shots, but we got what we could. Um, the information coming in is always kind of weird around here.
So I'll tell you, there was somebody worried about losing their home. They put out a voicemail. I don't know at this point if any homes were lost. Um, we're trying to get more information. It's really hard to get good, solid information here. But um, we'll give you that information if we get to it. You know, somebody uh, offers it up. We'll, we'll hear more while we're in town today. Um, but yeah, that's the state of things here. And it happens. And yeah. having a plan in in place is of utmost importance. And uh, it's one of the things that you uh, have to deal with in this country. And, um, you know, every country has its drawbacks. Yeah, burning is, is the, definitely a drawback here. Definitely. But if you're cautious of where you choose to live, it will be, it'll help you in the long run. So just so everyone knows, this was not some blue laser started this or anything like no. that. This happens here all the time. This was started by a farmer. Um, we're pretty sure, we're 90% sure. Yeah. And um, it's pretty typical, it happens here every year. Um, entire mountainsides get burned off. And uh, it's just not a great thing to have happen. So, you know, no conspiracy behind it at all. It's just yeah. the, the bad farming practice. Yeah, we did put our, our tinfoil hats away. Yeah, put the tinfoil hats away for today. Yep. So uh, that's just a quick update. We're going to get this video out right away to you so you can, uh, you know, kind of keep track of what's happening. If we have more news, we'll bring it to you. All right. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.